Hi all. Uh, today we are going to see about the principal component analysis which is part of the descriptive modeling. So this is the topic in uh, data mining or you could use the same topic in machine learning as well. So this is the topic which we are going to see today. So the agenda is you know why we go for PCA. So what is PCA? So can we understand PCA much better? So is there any statistical formula or mathematical concepts behind PCA and uh, where can we apply the method of PCA and how can we use it using the two tools okay the statistical analysis tool RStudio and RapidMiner so this is what the agenda for it so why the need for PCA so PCA is basically principal component analysis Okay, so you have already uh, learned about a concept called curse of dimensionality. So as the dimensions get increases, okay, the uh, that means that the number of the attributes, okay, is nothing but the dimensions in a data set. So when you when you consider a data set, basically, the dimension is nothing but the number of the attributes. Say if you have a data set. And if that data set has got three different columns, three different attributes, then you could say that that is uh, three dimensional data. Okay. So what happens is that, you know, uh, when we talk about uh, a one dimensional data, it is easy for us to visualize. When we talk about two dimensional data, it is easy for us to visualize. But as the dimensions increase, okay, say when we th think about the cube, it is okay, fine. But when we think about more than three dimensions as a normal human being our imagination has got a limitation to visualize the data on to a multi-dimensional space okay so is there a way so that we can reduce the number of the attributes because the dimensions are nothing but the attributes okay so can we reduce the number of attributes but still can we preserve the information and the relationships you know we have already learned about correlation right so correlation is nothing but how two different attributes are basically related to each other what is the strength of the relationship we have learned about covariance uh, you know which shows about the codependence of two different attributes right so we will be using all these concepts here in pca in order to identify and understand you know how well each and every attribute is related to each other so if there is a high correlation between two attributes can we preserve the information in another attribute and ignore one okay so or how can we actually incorporate the meaning of few attributes to another another set of attributes so that we can reduce the number of attributes or the dimensions that we are going to deal with okay so basically principal component analysis deals with dimensionality reduction so it is one of the most famous dimensionality reduction techniques that are that that is available in the market okay so now so this is basically taken from edurica and uh, this is a small example i felt like this is a beautiful example which they have actually uh, told about so uh, this is a one dimensional space okay so you are walking through a straight long road okay and you have walked there and before and you left one of your coins so you're going to you are you're going in search of that particular coin which you have lost before okay so if it is a long straight road you don't have to take any turns or anything it is very easy for for you to walk through that particular road and find that particular coin but just imagine that no you are basically in a square or in a rectangular shape area okay so there when you think about losing a coin and finding going in search of that particular coin definitely it increases the complexity so you have to you know definitely go through this way then you have to you know move through that way so you need to take a certain you know direction you need to check everywhere so the dimensions as the dimensions increase the complexity increases now just consider you know you are in a building and you lost your coin say maybe a cube okay consider that as you know three dimensional or you know a multi dimensional so in this particular space you lost your coin so you have to go in all the different ways to you know find out the coin so as the dimensions basically increases what happens is that the complexity also increases this is basically the concept of curse of dimensionality 
okay so when you have so many number of attributes in your data that definitely poses you lot of complexity in identifying the frequent patterns or in identifying the uh, the valuable insights from that particular data okay so you need to understand that which attribute will which which all set of attributes will actually contribute to the insights which all attributes will not contribute to the insights okay so when it is only you know just single dimension it is very easy for us to understand with our own eyes but as the dimensions or the attributes in a data set increases it is very difficult for us to identify which has to be preserved and which one has to be ignored right so this is basically the curse of dimensionality so in order to deal with this so this is another example which is actually taken from statquest and uh, say uh, there are so many mice okay there are six different mice and there is a gene one so this is basically what kind of a data so this is basically a one dimensional data i can make it as a one dimensional data so i am uh, plotting the data onto a one dimensional line so when you look at here you can see this 4 5 6 you know comes to the you know high values and you could see that the high values okay because they have uh, like you know 3 2 1 so they do have a lower value and uh, here when you see this 1 2 3 so these are the gene so gene 1 2 3 basically has got 10 11 8 so they have got a higher value so if you can map it onto a one dimensional space it is very easy for us to understand then you could say that okay this 1 2 3 has got some kind of a similar behavior okay or one or two has got you know they are highly correlated they have you know some uh, more uh, closer behavior okay but when it comes to 3 okay fine they are still you know they are more related to 1 and 2 than 4 5 6 so you can infer lot of information from this you know uh, from this picturization from this visualization okay now when you consider two genes okay so what happens now the dimensions basically increases now you have more set of data so when you have more set of data you are going to plot it on a 2d space so you have gene 1 and gene 2 so when you look at it basically 4 5 6 again has got a lower set of values and here when you look at it okay this uh, 11 10 11 8 and here it is 6 4 5 okay so they almost have a similar kind of so th- still you can form basically you know you can divide the data into two different types okay so uh, so this is how so when you plot a particular data you will be able to understand or infer from the data also in a better way so but as the <coughs> number of the attributes increases plotting the data will become con- complex as well so now this is a small example so why do we go for pca okay why can't we just see the data and you know uh, you know infer in the way which we uh, barely see with our eyes okay so here is a small set of attributes which is given to you like student ids names addresses email phone numbers courses etc okay but i am asking you to um, do an analysis on the students progress through their degree so this is what i am asking you to identify or you know to do some analysis on the data and i am given with all these attributes to you so you need to your job is just to identify which all are the main attributes that has to be taken from these set of attributes in order to do the student progress analysis <laughs> so when you look at it if you are going for a student progress analysis basically you need student id yes then you need the course then you need the grade do you need the name exactly you know because you already have student id from which you know you can you know because every student id is basically unique for a student in at at a particular of time right and address is not enough it's not required email is not required phone number is not required so from all this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 attributes i can actually you know use three different attributes like student id course and grades are the three major attribute which will contribute to this particular analysis so i can reduce my dimensionality from this one to three uh, three different attributes so that does not mean that we are going to completely ignore this because by getting the student id we can always retrieve these informations okay but still for this particular analysis we require only student id then we need course and then we need grade so this is why we go for pca so the thing is say we have only seven attributes there just consider a situation where we have millions or trillions of data 
okay then we cannot just simply look at a particular data and identify okay i'm going to take this attribute i'm i don't want the other attribute it is not easy or easy for us to identify that okay so we go for the technique also there is an easier technique so even in machine learning <coughs> when the dimensions or the number of attributes in the data set increases we have this issue so in order to deal with this issue and reduce the number of the attributes into a uh, into a smaller dimension still preserving the um, still preserving the features that are required to identify the major information okay we had come out with a we have a technique called pca okay that is nothing but principal component analysis so that is our solution so high dimension data is extremely complex due to, uh, to process due to inconsistencies in the features which increase the computation time and make data processing and exploratory data analysis more convoluted so this is one of the major problems why we go for or, or reasons why we go for pca hope you are able to follow me now this is a small example okay so uh, yes uh, so in this example mm, just a second so in this example we are going to uh, this is from uh, louis serrano by Lu this is a picturization visualization by louis serrano which i felt like it is really uh, nice so i have taken it so you are going to buy a particular house okay so you are going to mainly look at certain features okay so the major features which you are going to look is the size the number of the rooms the number of the bathrooms the school around it and the crime rate <coughs> and the crime rate so these are the major factors that you are going to see in a while going uh, while you are going to buy the housing data now can you reduce this to a uh, simpler dimension okay so that is my question so 1 2 3 4 5 you have five different features can you reduce this to a simpler direct uh, dimension so that is a question yes if i consider this data as two different features okay like you know size the number of the rooms then the number of the bathrooms as a size feature and the school and the crime rate basically as a location feature it is possible okay so i'm reducing this one two three four five different attributes into a two different features so i'm mapping them onto a two different features but when you consider the size feature it already has incorporated all the information about the size the number of the rooms and the number of the bathrooms and say if i if i consider this location feature that is already that has already preserved the information from the schools around and the crime rate so that is the beauty of principal component analysis okay so now moving on to the um, another uh, example so this is kind of what are we going to do so we have our original data okay from the original data we need to remove all the inconsistencies okay then we if we have any redundant data we need to remove that then we need to find out the highly correlated features because if the features are highly correlated then there is because one increases the other one also increases so there is no major information that we could uh, provide back to the insights or the inferences that we are going to get later okay so from that we need to find out a new space with lesser features but at the same time what you have to do you need to retain most of the info you cannot just ignore some info and you can just take some info that's not possible you need to preserve the information from your original data set still reduce the number of the attributes that's your technique so pca is a dimensionality reduction technique that enables you to identify correlations and patterns in a data set so that it could be transformed into a data set of significantly lower dimension so here he you had more number of attributes now you are going to reduce it to a lower number of attributes without any loss of information or without any loss of important or significant information right so this is what you are doing in pca so this is nothing but principal component analysis so we have seen like what is pca the definition for pca and why we go for pca because as the dimensions increase or as the number of the attributes increases what happens automatically the complexity increases it's very difficult for us to identify which all attributes has to be uh, which which information is significant which is not significant so it is difficult for us to understand so we need some technique to deal with it or tackle with it so we go for the technique or the machine learning or the data mining technique called what 
principal component analysis. So, uh, in order to uh, before moving over to this uh, uh, um, over to this uh, concept like PCA, you now we need to have some basic understanding about uh, um, uh, some statistical formulas which we have already learned in the previous sessions for this. So, we should know what is a mean, we should know what is variance, we should know what is standard deviation. Okay. So, all these things are really important when we deal with the uh, principal component analysis because when you when you look at variance, when you look at standard deviation, it basically gives you the uh, dispersion of the data. Okay and mean basically gives you the central tendency of the data. So, you have got the central tendency of the data at the same time you will be able to understand the spread of the data right. So, these, uh, these uh, formulas basically gives you a complete understanding about how your data look like or you will get a detailed understanding about the distribution of the data. So, these are two different data sets which is given to you. So, you can you are calculating the mean here, mean of the first data here, then mean of the second set of data here, then this is the variance for the first one, then the variance for the second one, then you are actually calculating the standard deviation of the first one, standard deviation of the second data. So, by looking at the standard deviation of the first data and the second data, can you identify which data has got more spread? Yes, of course, the first data has got more spread. Okay. So, this is how you should be able to infer from the mathematical or the statistical analysis which you do right hope you are able to follow me. Now uh, another concept which you have already learned is covariance and correlation. So in principal component analysis basically we use this covariance. So covariance basically helps you to identify uh, the codependence between two different attributes right. So moving over to this this is the formula which we have already seen in our previous classes. And uh, this also you will be able to understand because this shows you a negative covariance and this shows you a positive covariance. So, this is what we told. So, when we get a, a covariance value as positive, we understand that if one of the uh, attribute uh, value increases, the other one also increases. So, it is so the other one is also positive. So, that is what we have seen just now. Uh, now, uh, in the negative covariance, if you if you get some negative value, then it shows that. Uh, the the value which you one attribute is inversely proportional to the other uh, other attribute okay so this is what you will be able to understand from the covariance value so basically when you have a covariance metric you will check whether the values are positive or negative now yeah in order to explore more onto it we need to uh, have a little bit more deeper understanding of uh, mathematical concepts like eigen values and eigen vectors okay so this is a small uh, recap of the eigen values and the eigen vectors i think you know we would have st studied it in our 12th standard okay so say if we have a matrix okay say we have uh, two different matrices like 4 6 uh, 4 1 and 1 3 so when we do a multiplication of this matrix say we get it like uh, 4 into 1 plus 4 uh, 6 into 3 like 4 into 1 plus uh, so 4 plus 18 so 22 and again if you uh, if you look at this uh, if you look at this matrix so 4 into 1 so 4 plus 1 into 3 okay 7 so you get it as 4 plus 3 7. So, this is how you will do a matrix multiplication. So, you will have this values followed by this values plus this values followed by you know this into this plus this into this. So, like in the row and in the column. So, that is how you will normally do it. And when you consider this one, you got it as like 24 and 16. So, this 24 and 16 matrix can also be written as 8 into this 3, 2, right. So, that means that this is basically kind of a matrix or some points in a space which is in a different dimension like you know it's kind of multiples or you know it's kind of some value multiplied by okay this matrix is nothing but your result okay so in this particular example if you see this 8 times this 8 is basically the eigen value and this is basically the eigen vector so that is how you will easily understand so eigen value and eigen vector always comes as pair 
eigen value and eigen vector always comes as a pair okay and the this eigen value is nothing but the magnitude and this is nothing but the vector the eigen vector so this is basically a point in that particular coordinate space and this is the magnitude of that uh, value so this is how you will understand the eigen value and the eigen vector so there are certain you know so basically you know normally we, we could say that you know we always find the organ eigen vectors you know on a square matrix and basically it's a linear transformation of the matrix so these are also mathematical terminologies which you will come across and uh, for a, a, any uh, so you can have an eigen vector only for a square matrix so this the matrix has to be square okay and this is basically the eigen vector and the 8 which you have seen here is basically the eigen value so these are all certain things which you will understand so this is even more complicated it's it's not complicated but you know when you when you say that you know uh, always the length of the eigen vector has to be 1 so how can you do that yes you can take the transpose of the eigen vector then uh, it's basically you know you are finding like uh, you know the uh, you are applying the pythagoras theorem like you know uh, a square plus b square and you know you are you are getting it and you are dividing the values by that so this is basically your unit eigen vector so these are the major concepts which you have to understand so the eigen values are basically the multiples of the eigen vector so eigen values multiplied by you know eigen vectors will give you your square matrix okay and the eigen values and the eigen vectors always come as the pairs and the eigen values will show you the magnitude of your vector and eigen vector will show you the direction of the vector so this is how it basically looks like now um why do we require this eigen values and why why do we uh, uh, why did we tell about this eigen values and eigen vector here yes we told about this eigen values and eigen vector because the principal components that we are going to get for each and every data set is basically the eigen values okay so say we if if we have you know multiple dimensions say five different attributes and we are actually you know getting five different uh, principal components also if we have five dimensions we will basically get five different principal components and this five different compo principal components are basically the pairs of eigen value and eigen vector so we will have five different pairs of eigen value eigen vector eigen value 1 eigen uh, value 2 vector 2 eigen value 2 eigen vector 2 like that we will have five different pairs now what we will do is we will uh, we will find the maximum eigen value so whichever eigen value eigen vector pair has the maximum eigen value that will be considered as the principal component 1 so that that means that the first principal component value which has got the maximum eigen value has got the maximum information regarding your data okay say if you want to take principal component 2 that basically contains the information about the rest of the value the rest of the hidden information whatever is there that will be preserved in your next principal component like that it goes so maybe after some time if you are say if you are taking all the five different principal components it is exactly like you are taking the original data so we won't do that okay so this is what the concept of principal components and how principal components is basically related to um the Uh, eigen values and the eigen vectors okay so now this is again an example <coughs> this is again an example which shows you like you know you have a set of people and you need to take a picture so now we need to understand that which projection has to be taken or which eigen value or which eigen vector so which direction we need to take the photo so our eigen vector as we told it's nothing but the direction in which you know we are going to project all these values onto a particular line okay so in which direction we need to project so which direction would be the best while i am you know taking the photo of all these pe people whether it will be from here or whether it will be from here so that we need to understand so this is one example which shows you like you know which direction it will be better if you take the picture so just consider that okay we can take the picture from this particular direction which covers most of the people so even on that particular even if you take those you know it might not cover everybody in the proper way but yeah so if i am taking from <coughs> picture from this side i might get the data like this okay so considering these two datas and plotting onto the 1d space which data is more better yes from this 
this area if I take the picture I understand that I will get more details okay than this one this is like cluttered and occluded okay and this is more good for me to understand more information so there is a variance <coughs> and there is a spread of the data and here when you look at this particular data most of the data are cluttered okay so this is how you will understand or you will consider which projection or which direction the data has to be ta taken so whenever we have more spread of data that direction has to be taken Now this again you know we are moving over to the next example to just understand you know how PCA works upon two different genes okay. So that is we, that is what we are going to see. So we have two different gene data which is uh, calculated which is found from two different uh, you know six different my mouse and we are plotting the data. So once we plot the data then we do not require all this. So, uh, so we have actually plotted all the data in this. So we have mapped all the values both to the gene 1 and to this x axis and the y axis. So now we have found out the middle point or uh, middle point okay we have found the middle point of all the data and after finding the middle point what we are going to do is that we are going to project it onto a higher space. So we are going to make this middle point onto this origin of the data okay. So we are going to shift the data onto this middle okay. So see here we are shifting the data. So now the major thing which you have to understand here is that okay shifting does not change the data points uh, how the data points are positioned. So, the data points when you look at this particular picture when you look at here you know it was almost it is all the same. So, it was here now I am shifting the whole data on to the middle that is all I did ok that is all we did. So, we just shifted the data from this you know uh, this direction to a little bit you know we just you know rel relatively we shifted the data that is all ok. So, shifting the data did not change the data points positioned relative to each other. So, here still uh, here when you look at it this is the rightmost point and here this is the lowest most point when you shifted it to the center this is the rightmost still this data is the rightmost one and still this is the lowest one. So, does not change you know it does not change the position of the data has not changed even after shifting. So, that is one thing which you have to understand. Now, you getting the point. So, when you sh even if you shift the data you are not able to you know the, the position of your data will not be changed ok. So, now the data are all centered near the uh, near the middle. So, now we could say that all the data is basically centered near the middle point. Now, what we have to do now we need to find a particular line which will fit maximum of this points ok. So, for that we will randomly draw a line then we will slightly shift the line in such a way that the distance between the line and the points are lesser ok. So, we will randomly draw a particular line then we will shift the line ok. We will start rotating the line in such a way that ok the distance between the data point and the line is smaller ok. So, ok we understood that this is the best fit which you know make sure that the distance between the points all the points and this particular line is the minim minimum. So, this is how we will uh, find out the PCA. So, this is your eigenvector you are getting it. So, this line this direction is basically nothing but the eigenvector. Now, in order to find out the eigenvalue you can draw uh, you know from this particular point from this particular point what you will do is you will draw a straight line to this red dotted line ok. Then from the center so if you see it will it will look like a triangle ok it will look like a triangle. So, if you have the distance here this distance you know this distance you know then how can you understand this distance this distance is nothing but by using the Pythagoras theorem ok a square plus b square a square is equal to b square plus c square with that formula you will be able to understand this particular distance. Again if you want to identify the distance from here from this distance to this line you will draw a uh, you will draw a line straight then what you will do you will draw a line here and then from the center you will draw a line here. So, you will again find out it will be a small triangle that is all ok it will be a small triangle that is it. So, like that you will be uh, you know uh, getting the different triangles and you will be finding out the distance from the center to this particular point. 
okay so that is nothing but the magnitude the uh, eigen value and this is nothing but the eigen vector so uh, so this is what we have seen just now so these are the various steps so in order to we are going to consolidate everything what whatever we have learned till now and uh, we are going to tell it as the steps in pca so we have to collect the data then we have to standardize the data standardize the data is that sometimes the different attributes can have the values ranging from different uh, in, in different uh, ways like you know one attribute can be like you know 0 to 5 the other attribute can be from hundreds to thousands so there could be difference of you know difference in the uh, uh, what is that uh, difference in the uh, in the in the range of the values so in order to standardize that you can apply the normalization techniques upon the data and once you did that then you could find out the covariance matrix that is nothing but say if you have 100 attributes you will get a 100 by 100 matrix if you have 5 attributes you will get a 5 by 5 matrix so each and every attribute will have its corresponding how the each attribute is related or co-dependent upon the other date uh, other attribute you will get an idea from this then you will calculate the uh, eigen vectors and the eigen values so that will give you the principal components okay then finally by using one method called elbow method you will reduce the dimensions of the you will you will understand that okay how many principal components has to be taken that will that could be identified by there are various methods available the most commonly used method to identify say because if you have five different attributes or five different dimensions then you can have five different pcas right you can have five different principal components but we don't have to take five different principal components right we because our aim is not that because our aim is to reduce the what reduce the number of the attributes right so which are principal components will maximum preserve the most significant information from whole of the data that has to be taken right so that will be understood or that can be understood with the help of what with the help of the el elbow method so this is again so you are collecting the data then you are doing a standardization that is nothing but uh, say uh, say if you are using the sigma transformation then x minus mu by sigma then you will understand your covariance matrix so this is your linear transformation matrix so uh, you will get the eigen values and the eigen vectors and uh, you can you can get the first principal component which has the maximum information out from it second principal component the second uh, the remaining data will be consolidated in that and then you can reconstruct your new data set so how can you reconstruct your new data set yes you could do that by using this particular formula so you have your resulting data so you have your eigen vector matrix so you can take the transform of the eigen, um, eigen um, vector matrix and then the adjusted data matrix so this is how you will do it so basically when you uh, perform this in r studio and r or in the rapid minor you will be simply calling the pca with the, maybe the uh, the basic pca or the basic uh, the pca by using the kernel in the rapid minor and if it is r studio you have two different uh, functions like print comp or pr comp so these are the two different functions which are available in that so there you don't worry much about all this but this is how basically it works or this is how the reduction happens now in order to see each and every step more in detail so you have already collected the data so say this is your data <coughs> say you are going to uh, rate a particular you have the ratings of the movie and you have the number of the downloads say if you have this kind of you know range differences so if you if you see the uh, 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 the number of the downloads are all large right here the rating is all small values because it might be, be between you know one and five so there is a bigger range of difference so that can uh, seriously cause uh, issues in the values which you are going to get right so in order to uh, reduce that what you could do is so here the range is the features has got different ranges okay varied ranges so in, in order to um, you know normalize it you can use this formula like x minus mu by sigma so each x you will take minus mu that is your mean divided by the standard deviation so this will make sure that all of your data is within a certain range maybe 0 to 1 or minus 1 to 1 you know so that means you know you can uh, map all these values onto a reasonable range without so it's like you know you are scaling your data in such a way that you are making the data all in a in a compromisable uh, range for all the attributes in that now this is your covariance matrix which you will see so why we go for covariance matrix so what does they 
uh, from what what do we understand from the covariance metrics yes we will be able to understand about the codependent factors that how you know a a is related how a b is related how b is related to b you know that codependent information will be understood and we will be able to understand whether there is a positive covariance or a negative covariance so if there is a positive covariance we know that each of the attribute is basically directly proportional and if the uh, uh, if the uh, two different attributes has got a negative covariance it shows that it is indirectly proportional right so this is what we will understand from this and uh, then computing the eigenvectors and eigenvalues so this is nothing but the algorithm okay these are the steps in your algorithm or uh, algorithm for pca so you have to compute your eigenvectors and eigenvalues so in eigenvectors and eigenvalues eigenvectors clearly understand or show you the direction okay the direction with which the best direction where you can maximum incorporate the values and uh, eigenvalues will show you the scalars or you know the the magnitude of the uh, eigenvectors so this is nothing but your so each eigenvector will have a eigenvalue and normally when you uh, when you when you take uh, so which which one which one will be considered as the most significant principal component yes the 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 component with the maximum um, eigenvalue will be taken as the uh, first principal component as the first principal component followed by the second eigenvalue with the next you know topmost value it just goes like that uh, so this is what it is so uh, here when you see that see here this, so this is your principal component one so this principal component one the direction is this one and if you want to identify the uh, uh, principal eigenvalue then you have to calculate the eigenvalue for each and everything and uh, you have to do like you know uh, from this one to this one and then the distance between these these this this is everything so d square d1 square say distance bit between this one so d1 square plus d2 square plus everything so that that value will give you the eigen value and here this is another principal component which basically you know takes this much of value so all these values are not related here so these are all on, uh, this information is not gathered by this in this particular principal component if you take this principal component one almost all the uh, data points in the data set is basically considered here for so that's why we say that when we consider the principal component one one that will incorporate the maximum information from your data set okay so when you take this principal component to basically you know these values the the impact of these values upon this principal component is very less and the impact of these particular data data points to this towards this principal component to is basically less okay so this is how you will uh, basically create the uh, principal components so principal components basically are nothing but the eigen vectors and the eigen values so eigen vectors will simply give you the direction and eigen values will simply give you the magnitude and say if you if you if you are getting a set of eigen values and eigen vectors for your data then you know do a sorting and find out which all other which all eigen values are having the highest values so that you will be taken then how many number of eigen you uh, know uh, the eigen vector co value combination has to be taken that will be decided by the uh, elba method so that i will be uh, uh, i'll be describing that in the um, uh, in the lab okay and uh, so this is what it is so finally you will be getting a matrix so that is nothing but principal component matrix okay so uh, when you when you see here finally you have this data set so this data set is nothing but your matrix so this is your original data and then finally you will get a reduced data like this okay so this is again a, a simple representation where you know you are going to transform a five dimensional data into a 2d data uh, and how can you do that by using the pca so this is the data table the last data table which is given to you it has got five different dimensions x1 x2 x3 x5 so five different dimensions are there and uh, now you are actually plotting all the data upon a five. so this is a 5d plot okay so you have five different direct uh, dimensions 1 2 3 4 5 so upon this five dimensions you are plotting all the data then you have to find out the covariance matrix okay so you need to find out the covariance matrix then you need to find out the eigen values so you will be finding out all the eigen values so according to the eigen values you will be you know um, you know sorting your eigen value eigen vector data so from small to big and then you will be considering only the bigger ones and this will be basically considered so these three are eliminated based on a technique called elbow method or sill out method so there are different methods available and then say you have chosen only two vectors 
okay that means you will choose only two vectors so with these two vectors you can completely represent the whole set of information or whole set of data points and you can represent so from 5d you are now reducing it to 2d okay so these two vectors can completely incorporate the information preserve the complete significant information of your all the data points in this large data table now what you are doing is that this red points will show you all this so this is the vector the red vector and this is the blue vector which incorporates everything now it is like a 2d right so this when you when you consider this 2d it incorporates all the data points see here so this 2d basically you know incorporates all the data points now if you take that so you now now so what you have what you have done is that from 5d you have actually you know converted this 5d into a 2d data without losing any of the major information from your data set so from this table so you will take this pc1 and pc2 this w1 w2 is nothing but your pc1 and your pc2 so you will take pc1 and pc2 instead of this x1 this this attributes are now converted into what pc1 and pc2 so this is your new small table so you have actually converted this large 5d data into a two dimensional data without losing any of the major what uh, major information from the data set so this is what your pca is all about so pca is basically a technique which is used for uh, dimensionality reduction and uh, that is basically done uh, because of uh, a major issue called you know curse of dimensionality because as the number of the dimensions increases what happens is that uh, the uh, the data uh, the, the the complexity of uh, identifying the uh, important data from the whole data set will become very complex that's a, that would become a complex process so we go for this technique called principal component analysis so in the principal component analysis we, we basically we have got the steps like collect the data the standardization you, we are we will find out the relationship between all the different attributes we will compute the eigen vectors that means the direction and the magnitude of the values and then we will also find out the principal components and with the help of the principal components uh, we will reduce the data into a minor data without losing any major information right so this is what we have seen in principal component analysis hope you were able to understand at least a little bit about this prin uh, principal component analysis from this uh, topic so the only thing pending will be you know identifying the um, uh, the the how to select the number of the principal components by using the elbow method so when you look at this basically you know this is basically the graph which you will be seeing in by using the rapid miner so when you look at this particular graph so each point okay so each point is basically uh, one of your principal components okay so when you when you see here after here it's like you know uh, the, the points are getting saturated right so uh, so these are all different type of you know um, uh, each of the dots are basically the number of the principal components so when you when you come over here basically it overfits it will it will start overfitting the data so when you when you take everything it is like you know uh, it's like your original data itself but you don't have to so your your aim itself is to reduce the number of the you know attributes so basically if you can select uh, till here uh, you know like you know 80 85 percentage of the uh, uh, out of 80 85 percentage of the data is already covered in all this principal components so you could just take this particular data so it's like you know when you keep your hand like an elbow okay so from that elbow point from that you know uh, division point then you will not consider this particular data so that is how it works and in the same way this is your r uh, description when you could see when while doing the lab okay you'll be able to understand so this is exactly like you know how you have actually kept your um, you know elbow so when you when you look at here so from this after this you know two point you know you don't have to you know consider these particular uh, you know these two points you don't have to consider these two points at all so this will basically this itself will give you almost all the details like you know the first point and the second point itself will give you most of the details about your whole data set so this is how this elbow method will work so this elbow method can be um, it will be helping you to identify the number of the principal components that has to be taken okay that has to be considered okay this will so this principal components are nothing but your reduced attributes and these reduced attributes will contain almost all the information from this particular uh, from the data set 
okay so if you so the one thing which you have to understand here is that say if you have five different attributes five different principal components will be generated say here you have you have taken actually four different attributes so you have four different principal components but you don't have to take all the four different uh, you know principal components you can decide that with the help of elbow method so this you will be able to see it in detail uh, much more detail in your uh, uh, principal component analysis by using the r studio or you know either uh, the rapid minor you know whichever way uh, in from the lab you will be able to understand this much better so thank you so much for watching this so hope you are able to understand at least little bit about pca now so uh, now you can start doing your lab thank you so much